Hi, CMAT Dai here. Thanks for stopping by and checking out today's video. Welcome to Tech Tuesday, and we're doing the technicals of the market. We're going to talk about a couple things, uh, talk about why today was so fun for me, and then we're going to talk about a couple cryptos, and I'm going to go over the S&P chart as well, just to kind of give a little bit of a vibe to what I'm looking at and what I'm thinking is actually going on. So to begin with, this is the total crypto market cap. You can see that it is under $1 trillion and it's just me meandering over here and being ugly. That's kind of interesting. A lot of people are a little bit bearish right now just because of what happened today. The you know Fed Chairman Powell looks kind of like a rat, kind of acts like a rat, but that's a topic for another day anyway he came out and says that interest rates are likely to be higher than what was previously anticipated which basically just says that inflation's going kind of crazy you know the government's u.s government is just silly uh no what no one is really in control right now and they don't really know what they're doing um you can think the party who is in power. You know, ever since they got in power, inflation has been going crazy. We've been having a lot of issues. And instead of talking about the issues that we're having, like inflation, for example, they talk about other stuff. They try to act like it's not a big deal. It's been a big deal. And, you know, now, you know, investors are hearing that they're not able to really do anything and they're just kind of a talking head at this moment, which it is what it is. But anyway, because of that, I want to jump in and talk about the S&P, which is kind of the main market in the U.S. You know, we have the Dow, we have the NASDAQ, but the S&P is kind of what people look at. And I wanted to highlight this just because it's kind of given that vibe that, you know, we're not going to have a lot of greatness ahead of us. So we're getting, we had this end of the move right here. We got a, a WXY pattern, which is corrective. And now we're getting uh, this move here. Like this could be an A, this could be a, a B down here. Most likely not, most likely because this looks kind of uh, impulsive actually. So this could uh, be our A, a B, and a C, but that would be a very short C. So that's why I don't really have anything right now because it doesn't really matter. This is WXY, of course. And this could be a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, and a 5. That could be a possibility. But I don't like this move right here. So I think that this move are kind of conjoined. So something has to happen. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking at right now. But this move here is definitely an ABC which means this can either be an A, a B, and this is a C, but this is kind of an ugly C, so this would have to be an A, B, C structure here, which means this would be an A, B, C, and it's done. But this move is not very nice looking, and that's why I'm going with the count that I have now. This is a W, this is an X, and the Y is going to be up here. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a move higher over the next couple of months, maybe uh, a end of April, M May, June, something like that. So probably May to June, I'm looking for a move higher into that time frame. And then I'm looking for a smackdown in the markets and looking for this to be resistance, looking for price to come down. And because... Everything is correlated right now. Bitcoin is highly correlated to the U.S. markets. Uh, pretty much all the markets are kind of correlated anyway. So whatever happens here, we're going to see happen in the markets. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Now let's go to the cryptocurrencies. I'm going to start with Bitcoin. Uh, just because Bitcoin can be doing something similar to what we just saw in the s p so with bitcoin here i have all of this at all this down move is corrective 
I can zoom out and show the chart. Um, so this entire down move here since November of 2021, I'm seeing this as corrective. That doesn't mean that this is going to be the start of a move to new highs because it's not. I would be shocked if it was. Could it happen? Yeah, anything can happen. Of course it can. But do I think there's high probability? I do not. So what you saw with the S&P, well, we had a W up. Is that X done? Is it not? Have to wait and see. And then I'm looking for that move up into probably May to June, something like that. So with Bitcoin here, this is a, a one, two, three, four, five. This is completed impulse to the upside. The move down is not done yet. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that move to find something. And I think there's going to be a second leg to it. I think it's going to come down, come up, and then come down again. And that is going to be the buy point. Now, there is an option that makes this count look for new lows. And that would be an A, B, and a C. So five up can be the end of something, which is that C wave. And now we're looking for impulsive structure to the downside. That's possible. But I think most likely this is going to be the start of something. This is going to take a little while to play out. And after it plays out, then we can see that move up. And that's going to be the second leg of this. And then we're going to find a high. And then we can see a move back down. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Uh, we really just have to wait and see. You know, what's going to be important. Let's go to an hourly right now with uh, Bitcoin. Let me zoom out here and get a better idea of what's going on. Uh, maybe zoom out less. Okay, so this is the end of this structure here. And now we had a move down here and now we're having another move down, which it looks corrective by my standards. You know, uh, this would be an A, a B, and a C. This would probably be... Uh, W and X and a Y and then we had uh, this move up here and followed by very weak very weak right here so you know it's it's just there right now it's really just there price is uh, if, it, if it doesn't make a new low right here which is around 21,939 I'm just gonna you know say that rather than looking but if it doesn't make a new low and gets over, I would say 22,008, 23,000, something like that, then we can see that pop back up, finding resistance probably around 23,8 to 24,1, and then uh, maybe another move down from there. That would be very interesting if that actually did play out. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now in my head. But we really have to wait and see. I don't see this as a massively uh, bearish look it doesn't look like that right now it's just kind of there it looks corrective to me and i want to see a little bit of overlap to make it more corrective so that's kind of what i want to see with uh, bitcoin i'll jump out back out to the daily chart and if i zoom in here uh this is kind of what i'm looking at this really looks like one move here one move here which is actually pretty weak and then another move down so if it could get over that 23,000, that would actually look pretty good. And that 23,8 to 24,1 is definitely pretty decent resistance, followed by uh, 24,450 and 24,250. So those are the areas that I would really keep an eye on uh, to see what Bitcoin can do. If it does break this low here, which would be the low of this candle, which would be uh, 21,931. If it breaks 21,931 and it cannot get above this candle's high, which is 22,547. So if it does break that low without getting over that high, that can be interesting. And I want to see what it can do. And I ideally would like to see it stay over 21,402 
and then get that bounce, whatever that looks like. And then from there, it can come down again. And that's where I would look to buy in that case. So right now, I'm not really in the market. So I'm not trying to get into Bitcoin right now. But once something happens, I will look to, you know, probably place a trade. But right now, I'm definitely on the sidelines, just looking at stuff, waiting for stuff to play out. I day traded a lot today, not crypto, but futures and stocks, you know, just because we did have a, a big news event and with big news events brings volatility and that allows, that's how traders make money is volatility. So uh, volatility is really just a run towards liquidity and that causes a lot of opportunity. So next Let's go to Ethereum. Ethereum is interesting. Let me uh, zoom out on this and I can talk about the entire chart. And this is kind of what I'm looking at. This is a completion. This uh, over here to the left off the chart and up. This is a completion move. This was an A, a B, and a C, which is a corrective move. Uh, Bitcoin, I'm looking at a WX. Uh, W, X, Y, X, and a Z. You can't do that with Ethereum because it didn't make a low. Now, to have a truncated Z is super, super rare. You know, I'd have a better better chance of probability if I moonwalked backwards one mile to the grocery store and got struck by lightning three times. Probably have better probability than uh, a, this, the rare truncated Z pattern. So, ABC makes sense. And then an A, B, C up. Is this C completed, this orange one? Or is it yet to be found? That's kind of the question with Ethereum. And that question can be answered by this pattern here. So let's jump down to an hourly chart. And talk about it. All right, so this move here can be looked at a couple different ways. So it can be looked at as a leading diagonal to the downside. If it was, then this pattern here would look a lot different. So it's just create a uh, corrective gobbledygook pretty much. So that's how I'm looking at this. So if this is an A, this is a B and this is a C. It's kind of ugly and that's why I'm really just watching to see what it's going to do. I don't think this is going to be the bottom. I think it has lower to go. But I want to see it play out whatever it does. You know, I we're uh, always better off waiting for the setup than just you know buying something that looks like support or selling something that looks like resistance without a setup being there because that's that's what a lot of people like to do they like to just make setups up themselves and see if they follow through or not so that's really not the play right here the play right here is to set on hands at least the way I like to trade so I am going to be setting on hands right now just kind of watching things going over the charts seeing what is likely to happen um you know you don't have to, it's not the quantity of trades it's the quality so that's uh really what i'm paying attention to um you know like i said i day traded a lot earlier today i'm a predominant day trader anyway i like i love swing trading and position trading is something that i enjoy but i just don't get enough opportunity to really do that so that's kind of what I'm waiting on, waiting to see, is this done? Is this not done? And really, I think this next week might give us a clue uh, with the whole, with the S&P, with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, should give us a little bit of a clue as to what's going on. So I also want to talk about uh, Cardano. I didn't really do a lot of analysis on Cardano. But I want to talk about it because this move up is very interesting. 
and this could be the start of something but it's very weak right here very weak you can see that it's it's weaker than bitcoin and ethereum uh which is fine i mean it usually is not not 100 percent correlated with them it's always kind of its own animal but you're seeing a lot more weakness here which is very very interesting so if we saw that bounce in Bitcoin like I was talking about, which would be the same thing in Ethereum or similar thing. We would see a little bit of a bounce here, followed by another move down. And if that were to occur, you know, I think I'd be OK to, to get along the market and just see what happens. So that is what I'm looking for uh, with the S&P. I'm predominantly a day trader with the S&P. That's that's kind of my num plum is trading that market and i day trade it i don't swing trade the that market at all so that's kind of what i do so that's what i'm looking for right now is for this to pop up get a little bit of a move get some resistance around that 38 to 35 cent level and then another move down and this move would equal whatever happens here and that, then it would be a great buy. And most likely it would be somewhere down here around somewhere north of 30 cents, most likely. So south of 30, probably between that 32 and 30 area. So that's kind of what I'm looking for right here. It's going to be fun to see what happens. And then whatever plays out, like I said, I think it's going to at least give us a clue in the next week as to what is actually happening and then uh, we should have some trades to look at so that's really all i got hopefully you did enjoy the video if you have a different outlook than i do let me know in the comment section down below you know intelligent debate is fun and that's that's really what brings out the best ideas so if you have a different thought process or a different uh outlook let me know down below and with that, thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Have a great, great rest of your day. I'll see you around the crypto markets. Take care.